Ladies and gentlemen, this is Joe's Classic Video Games. We're back with part two of our gun smoke repair video. This is an old Chicago Coin electromechanical pinball machine. If you ever wondered uh, how to get those things up and running again, you can watch this video series and we kind of walk through it step by step showing you what it takes to get one from trashed to up and running and being fun again. So on the first, first video, there's a link below if you haven't seen it, uh, we went through and adjusted all of these switches in the bottom and worked on a couple uh, of uh, wires that were uh, soldered improperly and put in the wrong place and all that stuff and worked through a couple stepper units etc 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 so th in this video what we've done now is we popped the play field back in the game and we're going to work through the stuff on the bottom of the play field a little bit um, and uh, that will be next so and the reason I'm doing that is just basically we'll have everything in the body done and then we can start on the things in the head. So the first thing I want to do is we need to plug the play field in, but we can't because these haven't been cleaned. So if you look really close on these Jones plugs, as they're called, you can see the corrosion on them just from years of sitting around or the oxidation. So we're going to clean that up just by simply uh, uh, cleaning them off with sandpaper, really light sandpaper. We'll get them all shined up a little bit. They're not too bad, actually. It would probably, most of it would probably work, even without doing it. You can see that some of them get worse than others. Um, it might be that this is one that has more power running through it or whatever. I don't know. Or maybe it's used more often as part of the circuit. But we're going to clean these up a little bit, and then we'll plug it in, and then we're going to start working through switches. So I'll show you what it looks like after I uh, hit it with some sandpaper. All right, so I have cleaned them up. You can see that they are much shinier. Look how shiny. Don't stare too long, though. It'll hurt your eyes. Look at that. Now, you'll see the inside of the pins is still dirty. You don't really have to clean those because they don't touch any metal whenever you put them in the socket. So uh, these plug in way back there in the back. So I'm going to plug that in. And then next I'm going to go through, and uh, what I usually do is I clean all of the... Uh, the, the switches and the relays because it doesn't really take too long on the bottom of the play field and you just want to make it where you know like for instance this one well I can't reach that one let's find one that I can't like this one okay you just want to make it where see how the contacts on that switch don't touch and then when if the ball rolls over it they do touch so you just want to make sure that they're all kind of adjusted where it looks like it's doing its thing and you want to clean see how those are black that won't conduct electricity usually so you need to clean that up we use a little a little uh, file that we have that's like worn out so you're basically kind of just rubbing it off you can even use a business card or something um, just anything that you they make a special tool for it too that you can buy from the pinball places but uh, you don't want to get too crazy with it if you screw up that contact and cut it all up with a really aggressive file uh, it'll cause more problems than it solves so, so we'll go through and uh, we'll clean all of those switches and make sure they're all adjusted fairly decent um, and then we'll cl clean the few relays that are on the bottom I see three four I think there's four relays five relays um, and then uh, we'll clean the switches on the pop bumpers same thing and if I find any problems, I will come back. And I'm also going to take this apart, so I'll show you how those come apart. Um, since that's a good one that we can get to really easily, and uh, uh, it'll make for a good video. We've got the old school flippers on this one. Basically, if you've got like a strong spring action like that, that one's not as good. But this one, I'll bet that flipper's strong. Um, We'll work on those a little bit too. See how, see if we can get them a little bit nicer. See if we need to order a rebuild kit or anything. This says right flipper resistance coil. So look at this. They have a coil just wired up with nothing going on. What in the world is that about? Why is there not one for the left flipper? Let's see what's going on on the left one. Now, I may be missing it, but I don't see one for the left flipper. So there, there's there's two coils for the right flipper, but... Oh, no, there it is. Look. Left flipper resistance coil. So for on a Chicago 
coin, they have extra coils wired in that don't do anything, just provides resistance. Crazy! I'll have to, might have to look up what the hell is that's all about if you're just supposed to, I guess you just leave it, but is that something you can, uh, what's the purpose of that? We'll have to look that up, folks. Chicago Coin did things their way. They were like Frank Sinatra. Look at this. So someone has replaced this coil. See how it's different than these other ones? And when they did, they put this wire on. And then look. Look at their fine soldering job. Oh, wait. Did I say soldering job? I meant tying it around the lug job. And then on this end, they cut their wire loose and just wrap the wire around the old one. Hell, that'll work. Why not, people? I'm sure the pop bumpers worked great after that. So we'll fix that up a little bit, too. Um, so I'll, I'll clean some of those switches, and then I'll come back uh, whenever I find the next thing to work on. If I see any more problem childs, I'll film it. Okay, folks, I cleaned all the switches. Didn't find anything too crazy, although, as I was pointing out, that bad um, that, that hasn't been soldered in this as well. And then there was another one. Uh, that the same thing was going on. Where did I see that? Right here. But I don't think that was the only one either. I think there's yet another one. Yeah, this one. This relay, I, I don't know if just the coil was replaced or what, but they didn't solder it. What are they thinking, people? What are they thinking? So I'm going to throw some solder on those. And then uh, we're going to mess with the flippers just a little bit so I can show you uh, on these real old ones what you can do about that. All right, folks, so I soldered up some of the stuff that was uh, questionable. And then uh, I took one of these old school flippers apart. Um, these are different depending on the, on the uh, make of the machine and the year and everything. So this is the coil and the coil stop holds the coil on. And then this is the... Um, plunger and then this is the linkage and then uh, this is the pawl p-a-w-l so it's it attaches to the bottom of the flipper and when the coil energizes it pulls this in which turns the pawl which is on the play field making the flipper go up All right there's a spring here that you can see and then uh, there's there's uh, uh, whenever the flipper gets all the way out it hits this end of stroke switch they call it. So what that does is it opens the resistance uh, to one of these coils that we were talking about uh, how they have an extra coil for each flipper. So basically whenever it, whenever it hits it's using both coils BAM! So it's really powerful. Uh, but whenever it gets all the way out it drops one of them off so that you can hold the flipper up without it burning up the coil because it doesn't have to be really powerful to hold the ball um, it just has to be really powerful for that initial flip. So on these old ones, places where you need to look at to see if you've got issues. So if you've got weak flippers, this is this is where your your issues are. Uh, if the end of stroke switch is always open, um, the or if it's dirty so that it's not making good electrical connection, you'll have weak flippers. So you need to get that uh, nice and. You can either replace the switch with a, a newer one. They probably won't have this double contact on it like this one does. You see it. You can see that I've just cleaned it. Uh, it probably won't have that double contact, but you can get brand new switches. Um, and then whenever you pull this in, well, I can't now because I don't have the thing on it. But basically, whenever this pulls all the way in, the switch should just barely open near the end, right? And that'll give you strong flippers. Now, if there is wear in this linkage, it'll give you weak flippers too. So watch this plunger here. See that little bit of wear in it? That's not too bad, but that's that's probably about like a factory. Like if you get a new one, it, it'll have almost that much wear. It's worn just a little bit, so you could probably these could probably do to um, these could probably stand to have new linkages. You can also buy these linkages with the the uh, plunger already attached. There's a little cotter pin, or I guess that's called a, a roll pin. There's a little roll pin holding it together. You have to pound that out. Uh, or press it out to put this linkage on it. So it's kind of a pain. So if you're a home hobbyist, it's probably better to just buy the uh, the linkage already attached attached to the plunger. If the plunger has any, uh, if you whenever you fill it, you have sharp edges on the bottom, 
that will cut up your nylon sleeve and slow the the uh, the uh, coil down too, which is what's ultimately making the the flipper weak. This is the nylon sleeve that was inside of it. You can see the end of it's completely missing. This is a new one. So the end is completely broken off the sleeve, which means the sleeve was able to move, which was probably causing all kinds of problems with the with the uh, flipper. So this sleeve goes inside like that, of course, inside the coil, and gives a nice smooth nylon surface for the uh, the plunger to ride on. Don't ever oil these or anything; you'll cause a fire. <laughs> Don't be crazy, people. Sometimes you'll get them and people have put oil and grease and stuff all over them. Ugh, nuts. And then, uh, so the, the coil, people replace coils all the time. They hardly ever go bad, really. A coil will go all the way bad. It won't go, like, partially bad, usually. So sometimes you'll have a bad coil where it'll just be locked on. The way you can tell is you can just measure the resistance over the coil. And if any of your coils are below about 3 ohms, you might get some that are a little below that that are flipper ones because they're real powerful. But if you get down to where it's below, you know, two and a half ohms or something like that, just, you know, you can measure this one and then measure this one and see if they're similar. If they are, then that's how they're designed. But if this one is like 0.5 ohms and this one is 3.5 ohms, well, you know, this one's burnt up. It's shorted. So um, on pinball machines, usually you can do that because you'll have the exact same coils everywhere you know so this one is just like that one which is just like that one you can measure between them and see if one of them's bad um, I measured these none of them are bad so uh, we're gonna put that back on the last thing that it could possibly be if you have trouble is the the uh, coil stop so the coil stop is just a little metal piece that the plunger hits when it pulls in and sometimes these will give you trouble because they'll, uh, you can see how the end of it's not flat. On well, these, I don't believe they originally were. I may be wrong about that. Maybe I ought to look online and see what a new one looks like. But uh, sometimes if you have problems, uh, the coil stop is just so worn that it needs to be replaced. And all this stuff you can get, you know, fairly inexpensively. A good place to buy all this stuff for electromechanical games is from the Pinball Resource, PB Resource. Dot com. There's the little edge of the nylon thing that fell off. Um, PBResource.com. They sell all a lot of the electromechanical stuff. So you can. I don't know if they've got Chicago Coin stuff. They probably do, or something that'll work. This may even Chicago Coin may have even been using like uh, Williams stuff in their machines, or a copy of it, or something. Um, but so there's your major parts of it. So on this particular one, I'm going to put a new nylon sleeve in it. Uh, and I'm going to order probably some of these plunger and linkage um, pieces to get me nice and strong again. You also have this flipper bushing too. Um, if this is cracked or broken, or if after you put the, the uh, machine, everything back, you notice that the flipper has been dragging on the playfield, you need to inspect this to see if it's worn um, or if it's... If it get a lot of times too, they'll spray like WD-40 on this. It's crazy, but people used to use WD-40 for all kinds of stuff. And the problem with WD-40 is it it dries real gooey after a couple of years. So if if they've sprayed WD-40 on this, it might have gooey stuff all in it, which will make it where it hangs and it, it's just not smooth. This one here is really freaking responsive. So I don't think we have that problem, but uh, we'll look on the top of the playfield to see if the flipper looks like it's been uh, dragging. Sometimes if the flipper's dragging too, it's just because it's bent a little bit. So sometimes you can just bend the shoe, um, which is the, the plate that holds the flipper. It'll be bent like that. You can just bend it up or bend it flat. Um, and, or you can just replace them. You can get new ones of those too. Uh, the Paul, usually on, on these types of machines, doesn't really wear out. Sometimes you'll find one where it's missing or it broke or something. Um, but usually those are fine. So we're going to put new nylon sleeves in them. I'm going to order these, which is going to take a while to come in, but um, we'll probably have it up and playing by the time those get here. Um, and that's about it on the flippers. So I'm going to do that next. And then uh, I'm going to film a little video showing this, uh, taking this spider off of this uh, stepper unit so you can see how those go if you've never messed with one of those before. Okay, folks, we're making progress. We put the flipper coil stuff back together. You can see they're nice and springy. And uh, I oiled the little pop-up thing 
there's a little on this game there's a little thing that can pop up between the flippers put a little oil on that I also went through and I replaced all the light bulbs that are under the play field Whenever you do that, you have to clean the inserts. So, like, there's a little plastic insert, you know, the light shines through. And sometimes on these old ones, they are filthy. So, you got to clean that. So, now we are down to this spider that I was talking about. So, as you can see, on our last video, we talked a little bit about the ones in the bottom of the cabinet and how they had been marked. So, look, there's red paint there and red there. So, let's see if that's even necessary. So this is the bonus unit. If I'm hitting this, it's not moving. So let's hit it this way. Oh yeah, it's all gummy and stuff, people. We definitely need to mess with this. All right, so whenever I reset it, you see it did slide back to that spot. And it's kind of staying there, so that must be the home position. So what you want to do is, I'm not so sure that it would matter on this one the way it the way they're so even but what you want to do is uh, take this off carefully and lay it down somewhere since it's marked it's not as big of a deal but make sure you can put it back on exactly how it is whenever it's spun back to home position like it is now because if you put it on I don't know about on this particular one but on some of them if you put it on backwards you're all screwed up so we're going to take that off with this nut and then the washers take the spider off and then on this side we're going to take this gear off, the tooth gear, or whatever they call it, spindle maybe. And we have to take this spring loose here. You can see I've got grease all over me. Take this spring loose, and uh, let me see if I can do that right now so you can see what how I do that. Ow, okay. So I just took it loose, so whenever it's how it is, how it's set, it's like that. And so I unwind it, so that's one revolution. Two revolutions, three revolutions, four revolutions, and now it's now it's loose. So when you put it back on, you need to tighten it up four revolutions, and it'll be back how it was. But now that that's off, we'll be able to remove that once we take the spider off. Um, so what I'm going to do uh, now is take that nut off. I'll take all the pieces off and then show you what it looks like. All right, folks, so here's the parts. So on the one side, we had the nut, and then a lock washer and a washer, then the spider itself, and then this little washer was behind it. Um, and then on the other side, we had the gear. So you can see that the gear does have some oil on it. So somebody's oiled it at some point over the years. Everything's actually in pretty good shape. It's just filthy. So all of that dried up grease makes it sticky where it won't do what it's supposed to do and then on the spider itself you can see the contacts are filthy so that's a lot of the problem right up here here's the back side of it you see the gear just came right out and on this side you have the rivets on the um, bake light board or whatever that is so basically all these need to be real shiny because the, the the spider fingers touch it um, these need to be cleaned and we need to clean out the inside of the sh the the bearing or bushing whatever that is there um, and then put a little we use a three-in-one oil a little bit of three-in-one oil basically if the, the rule is if it's metal on metal you want to use oil if it's uh, nylon I said vinyl or on the last thing it's not vinyl it's nylon if it's nylon on metal you don't really use anything and if it's nylon on nylon you don't use anything but on, if it's nylon sometimes you can use uh, grease you just have to watch what you use that, that some people think that if you use oil on it it'll soak into the nylon and make it swell a little bit and jam things up but you kinda wanna use it leave it dry I think that's how they shipped but on this one it's metal on metal there's a metal shaft that goes through this metal bushing so we're definitely going to oil it and then what we usually do on the uh, contacts is we put a little bit of synthetic grease on it just so that the the fingers slide on it a little better and it seems to work great so we'll clean this up and start putting it back together 
All right, folks, we've got it back together. And when you hit the one coil, it resets. And when you hit the other one, it steps up. And it only goes four spots on this bonus unit because it's old, old school, but it's working good now. So we've done about everything we can do under the play field. Uh, the last thing I'm going to do before I start in the back box is we need to work on these flipper buttons that are missing. So I ordered some used flipper buttons. So we will see if we can get those to fit in or if we need to change that bushing or what the deal is. So let me grab that stuff and we'll, we'll mess with that. That was easy. All right, so the, those are from a Bally. And the reason I didn't buy Chicago coin ones is because you can't get them new and I couldn't find any used ones. So I bought some Bally ones that looked similar to what the Chicago coin ones looked like in the pictures I was seeing. The only thing was they didn't go through that bushing. They were a little too thick. So I just took a drill bit and <laughs> made the nylon bushing a little bigger until the thing fit in good. Went ahead and put the clip on the back. And we are up and running. There's not much to a flipper button. It just needs to push the just needs to push push the switch in. Alright, so for now I think we are ready to lay this thing down. And then what we're going to do next is pull the machine out and look in the back box and see what's up there. Dun, dun, dun. How suspenseful. This is what the back looks like. Dun, dun, dun. So connecting everything, we have three Jones plugs. Notice the filth. So you know what we'll do there? We'll clean those up. And they connect there, there, and there. And then we have the one to nine relay coil, it says. The 10 to 90 relay coil and the 100 to 900 relay coil. So those are the coils that pull in and make the score reels work. So we've got two sets of four score reels, first player and two player. And it's got them even labeled, the one to nine unit, the 10 to 90 unit, the 100 to 900 unit, and the 1,000 unit. And I guess that's for both, obviously. Up here it says score reset relay coil. So whenever the game resets, that will go crazy. Cha -cha 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 and then right here you have the famous gun smoke flasher unit. So we'll see what that's all about whenever we get the thing up and running. But I believe what it, it's a motor here. So I believe what it does is it changes the light that's lit up. 500, 300, 200, 150. And whenever you hit the button on the front, you win whatever's lit up at that time. Now that sounds like, oh, well, shouldn't be that hard to make a light light up. Well, that part's not real hard, hard but... Uh, you kind of need to make it pseudo random and you also need to make it score the, the right points whenever the right lights lit up. So they got to do that. This is the coin unit so it counts how many quarters you have on it or they call it the replay unit. That counts how many uh, how many credits you have left. Down here we have the 0 to 9 unit which I believe uh, is called the match unit on some things, but they probably run things other than the match through it. So it it probably is just a way to kind of make things a little bit random so that it can get a, well, I don't know. This one might not have anything like that, but basically whenever the match comes up, you know, it needs to light up a zero through a nine. And then if that matches your score, your last number in your score, you win a free game. And then this this one here is a little weird. There's There's actually two spiders on two boards and it says it's the player control unit so it's a little more complicated than they are on most machines but it's basically just the same thing it's just uh, spiders on a on tracks so what I'm gonna do first is I'm gonna clean those Jones plugs and then I'm going to clean the switches on these relays because that'll be the easiest so once I do that we'll start messing with this flasher unit Okay, so I pulled this uh, flasher unit out so we could look at it. I didn't have to take it apart because it's you can get to all of the contacts. So I was able to carefully clean them all. And then by pulling this in, I was able to turn the motor a little bit, get the spider out of the way, and clean the rest of them. And then uh, I put a little bit of grease on it. On the other side, it is just a big motor. So none of that really needs service. There may be a place that you're supposed to oil the motor, but I don't see it. Um, so the way this thing works is this, uh, whenever it goes to move, this brake pulls, this coil pulls in. 
which lets this start moving. You know, of course, the motor's turning it. It's got like a slip clutch on it. And then once that goes back in, it stops it where it is. But that cleaned up really nice, so we're going to mount that bucket back up in there. Bam! And uh, we've got these two here. I think what I'll do is I'll leave that hanging and go ahead and clean these while I'm... Well, no, I'll go ahead and put it back because I can take this loose and take it off where I can get to it a little bit better. Um, but we'll go ahead and clean this one up, the zero to, uh, the zero to 9 unit, and then we'll get over here to this uh, player control unit. That one's going to be a little more complicated. Okay, so this one was really easy to do because you can just get to all of the contacts. So I just was able to clean them and then turn it a little bit using the things and clean it, put a little bit of grease on it. I didn't actually have to take the spindle all the way out because it was it's turning really good. So it's all good. And then this one is the big, what do they call it, player control unit. So I'm going, it's a double level one, so I'm going to take it loose and get it out here where I can look at it, and then I'm going to take this top spider off, um, and then take this top board off, and then take the other spider off, so I can get down to this board and clean it. So uh, I might be able to do it around that spider, I don't know, we'll, I'll pull it out and uh, we'll check it out and see how it looks. All right, so it's basically the same old story. Once I took the outside one off, we're down to the inside one, and it's just like the other ones. Someone had marked it with red paint to show where it goes in home position. Really, you can only get it 180 degrees off, so if I put it on, because there's a little key, if I put it wrong, this uh, would be way up here, so you can't get it just a little bit off. And you can see how it, uh, I don't know if I can get any pressure on it. You can see how the spider flattens out once you get your spacer on there. And then on the back, same thing. I just took the gear out, cleaned it, put a little oil on it, wrapped the spring back around. And so after this spider, we have this little spacer here. And then there was a little, uh, the, the board goes back on and then this washer was on the outside of the board and then this spider and the nuts so simple enough and here's the other board I just moved it up out of the way so we'll clean it up too and put it all back together and that should get the player control unit working okay so we cleaned it up put it back together that's good and now we have started working on the score reels on this one they're a little different than on most machines again this is a Chicago coin and I think it's from 68, 69, something like that. You can see that in the middle of the reel, there's really no switches or anything, which means there's really no reason to take the reel apart, which saves you a bunch of time whenever you're uh, servicing them. You do have this switch on the back. You can see that pretty good right there. Let me see if I can hold it up and pull it in at the same time. You can see that's just a make or break switch. And when the uh, coil pulls in, it lets go of the one and makes the other one and advances the uh, real one, one number. And on the side, you can see the switches are a little harder to see. The bottom switch there is the nine position switch and then the ones above it are all closed when it's at zero I mean are all open when it's at zero and closed the rest of the time so we'll go through we're at seven now we're at eight and so watch when we go to nine this bottom one will push down see it pushes down on that bottom one and then when we go to zero they'll all open except for the very top one makes so you have to get all those cleaned and adjusted and when you do it will start snap snap snapping around and then on the other side of all of these is the uh, the little circuit board but again since it's on the outside all you have to do is just uh, move it around a little bit as you clean the positions 
with sandpaper, get the gunk off, and then put a little synthetic grease on it and everything's cool. So that's the way to go, folks. So uh, we're going to finish up all eight of those. And then guess what time it is? It will be time to see if the game works. Ah! That's all for this week. Join us next time to see if this baby purrs. As usual, leave your comments below and make sure to give us a thumbs up.